Welcome into another edition of Argo Sports Insider. I'm Will Kennedy. Joining us to start the show this week is UWF head football coach Pete Chinnick. Each week here on the show, we are going to be highlighting what's going on in University of West Florida athletics. It changes quite frequently from, from day to day and show to show, week to week, if you will. But we like to you know, expose our student athletes to the, the world out there and kind of let them know all the good things that are going on here. You guys would normally be midway through a season or you know, at least a couple weeks into it. It's a, it's a different world that we're in kind of we since we last talked to you what what has changed and kind of how are, how is it progressing with UWF football well you, you know we were trying to hit a routine and that was that was kind of the whole hope of fall you, you know get in some sort of routine Sally happened and that changed the routine so as we sit here today finally getting back into that with some individual workouts uh, Kent Morgan and his staff doing a great job in the weight room for us and we're really ramping up to now get out and actually practice. And so, you know, we've been following the guidelines of what can take place, how many people can be out there, where they need to be. But uh, starting next week, we'll actually be able to have the opportunity to have the entire team on the field. Still got to wear masks and still got to do things. Uh, but that's really what we had, you know, kind of been hoping uh, to get to. Sally pushed us back about eight or nine days because we didn't see our guys for a, a period of time there. Uh, but like where we are and like the progression that we're taking right now. I know you as a coach and your staff, you're kind of watching the workouts that you do have, trying to get a feel for where where the guys are, how have they done in this this weird time in the interim? How do you feel conditioning-wise and other, and other that your team is? Yeah, I think our top guys uh, are in fantastic shape. And the guys that are dialed in and focused, which we've got, I think, more than we've ever had, uh, they're in great shape. Uh, you know, for the rest, there there's some guys, you know, okay, where are we going to play? How hard do I need to train? I mean, a lot of things were going through a lot of guys' minds. Um, you know, I feel like we're in a place where we can actually practice. Uh, but now we got some guys that need to make up some ground. But our top guys and our seniors, and I think the guys that, uh, you know, next time we get together, we're talking about. I mean, they're, I love how they're working, what they look like, uh, and what they've done uh, to stay in shape and then compete against each other through these workouts that we've had. You guys practice right behind us here on beautiful Pin Air Field. Blue Wahoo Stadium by the Bay in Pensacola is where the games are normally played. And normally, as we mentioned, you know, season would be going, and you guys are – we like to remind people the defending Division II national champs, the reigning coach of mm -hmm. the year. And you would have a ring ceremony to, you know, before a game or some way to kind of usher in the season and congratulate last year's team and celebrate the title. Not able to do that the traditional way, but there is going to be something. So coming up on October 16th down at Wahoo Stadium, you guys are going to get a chance to honor that 2019 national championship. We are, and we were really looking for a date to do that. And like you said, we probably would have done that before a scrimmage uh, if everything was normal. Uh, you know, done that some tour, sometime in August, but we've we've now got October 16th, as you said, uh, gates open at 5 p.m., ceremony will start at 6, and really it's just an opportunity to honor those guys getting the ring, uh, bring back a lot of the seniors, we're, we're in contact with them, who can be back and who can be a part of this. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing everybody uh, and hopefully get a great crowd out there to uh, be a part of that and get a chance to see what that ring looks like. I mean, it's not it's not a fix for a game, but you know, at least it's an opportunity to celebrate the Argos and get together. And we did we got a chance, you and I, along with Quentin Randolph and Andre Duncombe Jr. and our partners with Cox Sports TV, to take that national championship game, which seems like eight years ago now, <laughs> but it was only you know a matter of months ago, and do some behind the scenes with it. It was really kind of a cool experience, I know, to to walk through that game again with a little bit of distance from it. Well, it was. it was. It was a blast to relive it and spend time, you know, hearing some of their thoughts. And, uh, you know, the game ends and to hear, you know, the, that last segment there that we filmed of just what was going through each guy's mind during that time. And then to get some insight from uh, both those players and hear what they were going through during the course of the game. I uh, thought it was a great format, really enjoyed doing that. And I, I think it turned out to be a really good show. Yeah, we got some replays of that. We'll let you know when those are coming up throughout the month of November. Uh, also on Your View Florida, our other partners as well do you as you walk past the trophy and other things do you still kind of get that that moment of nostalgia when you see those well you do but then you know like you say it seems like forever ago and I mean sometimes we'll be talking as a staff and we'll go now we did win the national championship right I mean we we we, we did accomplish that so it's great to have those reminders uh, that game showing and re-airing that that's fun uh, but yeah, you do. You, you, you kind of reflect on it because you don't have, that's our last game. That's the last game we played. Typically at this point in time, you're five games in and that thing is, you know, 
way in the past, but it's the last game we played, and uh, you know we're reminded of it often. Not a bad <laughs> last one to have played for sure. Uh, we'll look forward to hopefully. I know things are still in flux a little bit on what can happen in the spring, but good luck with getting these practices in and kind of getting everybody back into the swing of things. No, thank you. Coming up next here on the show, we'll check in with UWF volleyball coach Melissa Walter right here on Argo Sports Insider. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Your View commemorates the best season in West Florida Argonaut football history with replays of the 2019 playoff run and a special watch-along viewing of the Division II National Championship game hosted by Will Kennedy and featuring in-game commentary from head coach Pete Chinnick, linebacker Andre Duncombe Jr., and wide receiver Quentin Randolph. Tune in and relive the best season in UWF program history. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Penn Air Federal Credit Union, Jenny King, Hill Kelly Dodge, High Point Hotel Group, and the Florida Lottery. Welcome back into Argo Sports Insider. Joining us now is UWF volleyball coach Melissa Walter. We're here inside the field house where normally this time of year we'd have Whistles blowing and balls smacking off the floor and yeah. matches happening. It's not uh, the case right now with, with COVID. You guys have had your season postponed. Shakeups are difficult for coaches. We've talked to a few in different programs. How are you handling it? How is your program kind of dealing with the new reality? Honestly, it's, it's just something you have to take one day at a time. Um, I think, you know, how I would normally be at this time of the year is it's not an option right now. So we, we just have to, like anything, we tell our players all the time, you, and winners are flexible, and so we're having to be flexible on a daily basis, and our players are having to be flexible. And I think ultimately it, it just reminds me of like a five-set match where, you know, if you get rattled, everybody around you is going to be rattled, and it becomes a whole lot harder to win those matches. And, you know, we, we still want to find a way to win this fall, and it's just winning is taking on a whole different um, scope. And, you know, I think our staff has done a great job, and, and I'm super impressed with how our players have handled this situation. You know, for you guys as a program, being able to, you know, lose some of that spring, go through the summer. And, and I saw your, your team on social media really pushing each other yeah. virtually and at a distance to, to get better, to work out. How cool was that as a coach? It's been incredible. I think anytime you go through adversity, you see people in a different way and different players step up. And we're now I'm starting to see them for who they are as people and the depths of them and their they're just persistent and they're resilient and they're refusing to take any time period off. And I, I just think that is a credit to who they are as people. It says a lot about the types of players and people that we recruit. It says a lot about um, who they want to be and when, what they want to bring out of each other. So I think watching some of that and some of it, I saw some of it. I, I didn't see that the leadership council was sharing a lot with us. Our team was sharing a lot. We've stayed connected throughout the entire summer um, via zoom and, Face, you know, FaceTime and different uh, social media options. But right now, just having them back here for the majority is, has been great. And yeah, I'm, I'm certainly, I'm, I'm proud of them. How satisfying was it the first time you got them back here in the gym this fall? It was, you know, even, if, even as a small group, if it couldn't be the whole team to have that whistle in your hand and be ready to go. Honestly, it, it's, it's almost surreal. And I think what it's doing to all of us is when something is taken away from you, you have a different um, joy when you get it back. I mean, even being able to recruit last week, I walked into a gym and thought, 
you know, organized volleyball. This is the greatest thing I'd ever seen. You know, I'm watching it and to certain, and it was very good volleyball, but even on bad plays, I could appreciate people's effort. I was appreciating different things. And I think with our players, they're appreciating the game on a level that none of us ever would have thought we would appreciate it on. And I think right now we're really working hard with our girls about being grateful and they're, they're internalizing that. And, and that's really cool to see. We all have to find ways, I think, through this, this pandemic and all that we've had to change and the way our lifestyles have changed to, to cope with it and deal with it. You like to run. And, uh, and I, you know, for those who follow Coach on social media, you, you've put in a lot of miles during this time. What, what has that kind of meant to you, to, you know, to be able to run? You and I have talked you know, yeah. off camera about how, how it helps. Honestly, it's been my sanity. I think through the whole thing, like back in March, um, I'd run a half in February with a good friend of mine. And then when this whole thing happened in March, you know, the running groups kind of disseminated and everybody was afraid to be around each other. And I have one I really, I have a lot, a lot of amazing friends, but one friend who is just diligent as I am. And we've been around each other so much that I feel like she's family. And for me, that's like, that's the competitor in me. I have to go do something. I got to sweat it out. And I feel like psychologically it gives you a lot of advantages feeling like you're doing something to combat this virus that everybody is having to deal with on on one level or another i think it creates a, a great chance for me to be a good role model for my athletes um you know taking my health seriously and i just don't want to i never wanted to stop connecting with people through this time period even if it has to be from a distance and it puts pressure on your players if they see coach doing it they can't slack off as yeah. well Let's talk about what's ahead for you and your program. Sure. Obviously not the normal fall season. What are you hearing you know, from the conference and, and the potential of when you guys can play and what, what any kind of schedule may look like? Uh, yeah, it's right now, I mean, I think the fall is gonna be an opportunity for us to just, just train and do individual training. Uh, we're now getting into a team segment of training, which is awesome. The powers that be are still in decision with uh, what's gonna look, what the spring is gonna look like in terms of a season. Um, it's looking like hopefully we'll get to compete and to what degree, I'm not really sure. It might be some type of conference schedule, might be a little bit um, more like a normal uh, non-championship season would be like for us. So, you know, really ultimately in the back of my head, I just keep asking myself if I gained nine months at any point in my career, what would I do with it? If I gained nine months to train my players, what would I do with that time? I mean, time is precious and right now it's not what any of us would have signed up for but we still have time. So I, I'm, I'm just excited about what's going to happen in the spring, whatever it is. But right now, ultimately, I'm excited about walking in here every day because we know that that's precious. Well, Coach, thanks for spending a little time with us. And for I know sure. the fans, you guys, the players, looking forward to getting back here on this court, uh, having the noise and the energy that comes with UWF Volleyball. It's one of the most fantastic experiences we get. Coming up next here on Argo Sports Insider, we're going to spend some time with one of our sponsors over at Penn Air Field. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute for those who move. We've delivered hot, fresh, made to order burgers to your table every day since 1950. Now, we're just delivering them a little farther. Right to your front door. Guess you could call them special deliveries.
Delivery has arrived at Whataburger. Use our app or order at whataburger.com. Welcome back into Argo Sports Insider. We are here at beautiful Pin Air Field. This is Pam Hatt, the Vice President of Marketing for Pin Air Federal Credit Union and one of our biggest Argo fans. Thanks for yes. being here. Go Argos. <laughs> Spend a little time with us and what a great facility here to have yeah. Pin Air's name on it and to give our athletes, our student athletes, this kind of opportunity to train and work out. It's, it's a wonderful partnership. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, the, I have, I've been to a lot of college fields, but this one is extra beautiful, especially on a day like today. So We ordered up this weather just for you Thanks. to be here. Thanks. I know for the university and for our athletic programs and our athletic department and also for, you know, Pin Air, mm -hmm. having that community bond, that community relationship is a huge thing. And it's a natural fit for those two. But I know you guys with Pen Air really get out in the community and try to impact it in a variety of ways. Yeah, yeah. It's really one of our core values. It's part of our DNA. We like to call it communerosity, where community and generosity come together. And we really seek out like-minded partnerships. And that's really why we partnered with UWF. And we found that this was a great opportunity. This is the hub of future leaders in our community. And so it totally made sense for us to partner with UWF. And what better way to create awareness and uh, community and enhancing lives through the college. I know for, for you personally, but also for Penn Air as well, last year football season, we're here you know, on the football practice field, national championship, but you got to make trips to come to playoff games. I saw you along, all the, all the steps along the way and out to Texas and McKinney for that national championship. What was that like for you, both as a partner with the university, but also as a fan of the Argos? It really was fan first. Like I used my own money to go to these games because I was so bought in. I, you know, it's, it's a shame to say this, but I'm not, I don't have an SEC team or anything like that. I'm kind of from, I grew up on the West Coast. So Argos, that's my team. And uh, my daughter went to college here. She got her master's here, her, her original degree. And so it was a natural fit for me. So it was really great. What's going on with Pin Air? I like the hashtag you were telling me before we started recording. Pin yeah. Air is everywhere. Pin Air is everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's trying times. You know, we're in the middle of COVID. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a little crazy. So we've had to do things differently. Um, we just had one of our branches exposed, the whole entire branch exposed to COVID. Mm. And we were at zero and we were like, okay, we're gonna open up. And, and so, you know, it made us pause once again. We're definitely working towards that because we know our membership wants that, but we also need to put the health of our, our staff, definitely primary, because if we don't have a staff, we can't serve our membership. And that's important, just as important. And, um, but we're growing like gangbusters. It's crazy. Who would have thought in a, in a pandemic, you would grow like you would, so. You know, it's just looking at things and doing it differently and staying true to who we are and doing the best that we possibly can because the last thing we want to do is keep people from their money. We want them to have their money and we want them to have access to it. So well, We appreciate your support here at the University of West Florida. Beautiful scoreboard right behind us here. Pin Air Field, Pin Air logo Pin Air's on everywhere. there. <laughs> Pam Hatt, Vice President of Marketing for Pin Air Federal Credit Union. Thanks for spending a little time with us. Thank you. Let's all. get a Go Argos for them. All right, Go, go Argos. Argos. And coming up next here on Argos Sports Insider, we'll get to know some of our student athletes a little better. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Coca-Cola, Baptist Healthcare and the Andrews Institute, 
Publix, Whataburger, and CPC Office Technologies. Welcome back here to Argo Sports Insider. Each time here on the program, really one of my favorite segments that we do is getting to know our student athletes a little better. We're here inside the UWF Fieldhouse and we got a treat for you this week. We, we're kind of going totally different ends of the spectrum as far as sports are concerned. We spent some time with women's basketball player DeAsia Collins and football player Trent Archie. My name is DeAsia Collins. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I play basketball here at UWF. The amount of people, um, it's a lot smaller than what I'm used to back in Texas, and I guess kind of the culture change a little bit, um, kind of going at a slower pace. I have tried to stay away from barbecue here. I can honestly say I have not tried any since I've been here in Pensacola. Um, you know, nothing's topping the Texas barbecue, so it's like, I don't even want to taste anyone else's. I'm Sydney Colson. Uh, she played overseas and then she came back and played for San Antonio. She was just a really powerful player and a great leader, so I looked up to her growing up. I'm boring, so I actually just chill, watch Netflix, you know, try to take my mind off of everything else. Um, I'm a binge watcher on Netflix, so I'll sit and watch Netflix for a few hours before I decide to, you know, move around. <laughs> right now I'm watching Breaking Bad. I'm a little late. Um, I've watched on my blog recently, Show Lucifer, just, I try to watch new shows, but you know, something will be in my, my list for like a year before I get around to watching it. Just, I'm picky. I actually was a soccer player my whole life. Um, I played basketball and soccer since I was six years old, um, just alternating seasons with that. Um, the first time I stopped playing soccer was here when I got to UWF. I like to dance. Definitely. So, you know, if y'all come to the games in preseason, like before the games, I'll be dancing a little bit. I just like to have fun. <laughs> That's my favorite game. Like, you can ask my roommates. I'm always trying to play Just Dance. Um, I memorize everything. Like every single song there is, I have memorized. So if anyone wants to battle me in Just Dance, I'm all for it. <laughs> my major is exercise science. Um, I'm trying to work towards physical therapy. Uh, I have not decided on which grad school to go to yet um, or what I want to do in grad school, but I definitely want to be a physical therapist. Die-hard Chick-fil-A fan. Um, I get the number one sandwich with American cheese, no pickles, and then the fries and a Powerade to drink. That's my go-to every time I don't know what I want to eat. Sean <laughs> Archie. UWF Nickelback from Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, I'll say the biggest adjustment is really just getting to know like UWF and the and the embrace the culture around in Pensacola. I feel like that was a, a big turnaround for me. It's not used to the the country ways in Alabama. <laughs> I, I feel like the most satisfying part is really the memories and just the my time here at UWF. It just really took me. It's, it's a wild ride. Now I, I've enjoyed every moment of it, made many, many memories and uh continue to make more. As I look back, I mean, I really feel like it's more like the away games, like the time on the buses, you know, uh, chatting up with the guys, talking, get to know each other. I feel like that's what really bonded us closer. And I, I can think of 20 plus stories right now, which just was the greatest time of my life. Most of the time, I'm just watching Netflix, you know, or playing the game, you know. They're just, 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 it's the little things. Call of Duty Warzone, you know, add me on PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that work? Do you guys play as a team when you do that? Oh yeah, most that? definitely, most definitely. I play with a bunch of guys on the uh, team, Rod, you know, uh, Marcus Clayton. You know, we have a fun time. I watch Lucifer, that's a good show. I always uh, enjoy watching now on Blacklist as well. You know, gotta binge watch that, uh, you know. Really the crime suspenseful thing is kind of what I'm into. Uh, I honestly feel like D-Bell, you know, Rod, they, they both have a, a crazy personality and they always keep things, you know, crazy and just keep keep uh, the group moving. I mean, I feel like it's somewhat me, but we have a bunch of other players too that really kind of be the mediators. Uh, Ye, you know, the other corner, he's he's an amazing guy, you know, he just really knows what to do and knows when, when it's time to work and when it's time to play. Well, I'm a little different from everybody else, but I like listening to Drake, you know, something smooth. You know, it ain't always gotta be a uh, crunk or aggressive. I just like bobbing out. I plan to graduate in December 2020. I'm graduating with a marketing degree and I plan on going to medical sales. Oh, Twizzlers, some, some M&Ms, easy, sunflower seeds for sure. That's, that's just a must. Uh, you know, everything you ain't supposed to eat, basically. The Trent Archie, mm, gotta go to McDonald's real quick. You know, something short, sweet, two minutes down the road. Uh, Trent Archie meal, definitely have to be the two double cheeseburgers, extra ketchup, you know, a medium fry. 
uh, small Oreo McFlurry with extra Oreos. Don't forget that. Um, you know, large Coke, man. Just got to satisfy your thirst. Always good to find out a little bit more about our student athletes, what they're into and what they're into away from their field or court of choice. And we always get some interesting answers. And speaking of, coming up next here on the program, Maya Clark is asking a question that I would never would have thought to ask anyone right here on Argo Sports Insider. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people with a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back to Argo Sports Insider. It's time for another edition of The Lighter Side. Today, we talked to a few of our student athletes to see which one of their teammates they would be conjoined twins with. If you could be a conjoined twin with anyone on your team, who would it be? Probably Myra, because she was my freshman roommate and we're like been best friends for a while. Uh, Brett Carter, for sure, uh, just because we're already twins and I mean, you put us together, I don't know, you probably can't stop that. My freshman year roommate, Abby Williamson, probably because we're both adventurous, so I feel like we'd have a good time, like going around, doing whatever. Oh gosh, they're all disasters. <laughs> I don't know, probably Solandra Kelly. Just really know them the most, so, and it would probably be really funny to see us together all the time. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Lighter Side. Back to you, Will. All right, thank you, Maya. We've got a special treat for you next episode of Argo Sports Insider, the UWF football team celebrating that 2019 national championship that we referenced earlier in the show with a ring ceremony at Blue Wahoo Stadium right here in Pensacola. A fantastic night we have planned for all our fans, for the football team, and bringing that family, that great team, back together one more time. And we'll highlight that for you on the next program. We thank you for watching. Of course, as always, GoArgos.com is your place to get all the latest news. Hopefully, we'll be releasing some schedules soon for some actual games that will be taking place uh, around the corner before too long as we get back to normal. And you can always follow all of our programs. GoArgos is the place to be on different social media platforms, but they all have their own thing, too. We encourage you to follow them there. And we'll see you next time right here on Argo Sports Insider.